Hello everybody, today I am driving a Lamborghini Gallardo. Now that is not actually going to be something that's very unusual for me anymore as I'm lucky enough to have just purchased one. But there's something different about this car that's made me really desperate to have a go in it and I'm very grateful to its owner Dell for bringing it to me. Now if you think you recognise this car then you may well do because this is actually the very Gallardo that I drove a couple of years ago that was supposedly being raffled off. The raffle never actually went through, or at least they didn't sell enough tickets to give away the car, so this kind of just vanished off into the classifieds, and I heard a couple of people tried to buy it, and then it just went. I had no idea what had actually become of this car until earlier in the week when its new owner Dell got in touch with me and said he'd got it and he'd been enjoying it and had tidied it up and fixed quite a few of its ills. But beyond that though, he's also made one pretty major change to the car. He has converted it from all-wheel drive to rear-wheel drive. Now this is actually something that's fairly popular to do in America, other places. They've been doing it with R8s for a very long time and it's not actually that complicated either. Because these run a very mechanical all-wheel drive system, all you actually need to do is to remove all of the four-wheel drive bits, the drive shaft, the centre coupling, all that kind of jazz. You can bung up the holes with some blanking plates and um, that's it. All told, even if you do it the, the proper way, the cost is a few hundred pounds in parts and a couple of hours labour. Then to undo it, you simply refit all the bits that you've taken off. It's a very simple procedure. Because it is a purely mechanical system, the car doesn't even know that anything is wrong with it. The purported benefits are a 65 kilo weight saving, chiefly over the front axle too. You get the purity of a rear wheel drive car, so there's no longer any power going through the front corrupting the steering. It should in theory make it a little bit quicker, at least once you're up to speed because it is that much lighter. And that's about it really. But those are some pretty big changes and one of the things about the Gardo which isn't brilliant is its steering feel. So I'm really keen to see how this changes things. This isn't actually the first two-wheel drive Gardo that I've driven because I did take out Damien from the car guys, Balboni, which also had a manual in it. And that car though was um, a bit sketchy. I think there might be some setup issues with that particular car because it was um, all over the shop. This one feels a lot better set up. I've also been using this to note some of the things wrong with mine. I'm filming a video on all the issues with my car actually tomorrow in real time. But there's little stuff too, like the fact that the gear lever in mine has evidently been welded together. And that upsets me quite a lot because these are a thing of beauty and evidently someone's just broken it off in the past and rather than fixing it the proper way they've just gone yeah sod it and they've welded the two pieces together so it feels a little bit horrible underneath and that that bugs me but also it's something like seven or eight hundred pounds for a new gear lever it's two pieces the ball and the stick so um that's uh yeah that's something i'm gonna have to do a long way in the future but Let's get this car out onto the open road and see if these changes make a difference. You may also be able to hear one of the differences between this car and my own. At the present time, my car is running completely standard exhaust, including the standard catalytic converters, which will be coming off. This one has high flow sports cats and a quicksilver exhaust. Let's see what that does. straight away the steering feel is definitely improved there's a nice weighting through it there's some texture this car also grips a lot better than mine mostly because mine has some sort of 
awful, awful cheapo tires on it. And this one's got Michelin Pilot Sport 4S. certainly doesn't seem to be an issue when it's dry. In truth, a car like this, you're always going to give it some respect. 500 plus horsepower through two wheels, or frankly, even through four, you do need to exercise some caution. Sounds a little bit more like you'd expect a Lambo too as well. I haven't made my mind up yet as to what exhaust I'm going to go for, so people please do tell me. I don't want it to be silly loud, but I do just want a little bit more of that Lambo shriek. These are such good cars. Yeah, steering, it's light, it's always light, it's light in my car, but now it just seems to weight up just a little bit more, a little bit more naturally, everything just works. This still isn't Lotus-like in terms of steering feel or, or anything like that. A far cry from, say, a good McLaren or that sort of jazz, but it really does feel like an improvement, and you can still press on and still enjoy the car. Oh, yeah, she whips out of the bends beautifully. This thing is a delight to drive. I was going to say, I've got to get me one of these, but incidentally, I already have, so... That's that problem solved, I've just got to make mine as nice as this. I've also been talking with its owner Dell about the random nature of Italian car parts prices because some of the stuff in here that he's had to replace has been really reasonable, some of it maddeningly expensive. Compared in fact to some Audi parts prices, a lot of the stuff in here is actually quite reasonable. Some of it not, but interior trim pieces by and large actually are really, really cheap. Big pieces of the centre console, like 40, 50 pounds, stuff like that. It's actually really good value. You'd expect them to be hundreds and they're not. Gives me hope. really are going to be the downsides if I decide to take my car to two-wheel drive. Well, if I do take it out in the snow, it's not going to have quite the same level of traction as it would normally. That seems to be about it. I mean, the fact is that it's not really a permanent modification. You can revert the car back to standard nicely and easily. You've not really lost anything. So, seeing as today's video is a very simple one, should I convert my car to rear-wheel drive? Um, I think the answer is a fairly safe to say, yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Well, that's a short little video from me. Thanks all for joining. Thanks to Del for bringing his car out. Lovely to see it again. I'm really glad to see that it has actually been treated and kept in the right way and has had the love thrown in its general direction that it certainly deserved. Thanks to all of you for watching, please like, comment below, subscribe if you haven't already, because there's plenty more Lambo content to come, and we'll see you all for the next one. Bye bye.